when we're looking to buy a new watch, we come up with all sorts of reasons to convince ourselves it's a great idea. And after thinking about it for a bit, I've come to realize that there are only really five basic good reasons to buy something, among a whole lot of bad ones. So I thought I'd go over these today. And to be clear, these aren't good reasons in the sense that you can use them with your significant other to justify your purchase. In fact, that's probably a bad idea. So don't think of these as justifiable reasons. These are more reasons that point it to being a good watch for you. A smart purchase, one you won't regret, and a watch that you're more likely going to fall in love with and hopefully ultimately become a keeper. And the more of these reasons that apply, the better. Because I think the best way to save money in this hobby is simply to leave it. But beyond that, the best way is to really find something you're happy with. Something you won't immediately flip. So let's start things off with what's also the most justifiable reason, and that's simply you need it. Or at the very least, you could use a new watch. Now, this is something usually when your life has changed a bit, and you could use a new watch to go with that. Like, let's say you got a new job where you're wearing a suit more. A good dress watch would be a good idea. Or maybe you're working more at night. Tritium wouldn't be bad. You find yourself at the beach more or in the water, and you don't already have a good diver. Maybe you're doing some more DIY stuff around the house. A good beater would be a good idea. Or maybe you want to train for a marathon, and a GPS running watch could help you out. So these sorts of things, as not only are they good reasons, but also justifiable ones to spend the money. Now for number two, we have the most obvious reason, and that's design. Designs are like art. Everyone likes something a little bit different. You know it when you see it, and you know what you like. Simple as that. So, like I said, this is the most obvious reason. Because if you like it, that's a good reason to hold on to it. Whereas number three is less obvious, but equally as important. And that's that you love the concept of it. Of the watch, the history of the design, or maybe the brand itself. What it really represents to you. And this is that whole personal connection reason that not everyone agrees with. But if you think about it, a lot of the times when people buy something, what that watch represents on a grander scale plays a role in that decision. And that could be something like you're a pilot and you've always wanted a historic design like a Flieger. Or maybe you want a luxury brand, something that really represents success to you. It could also be something that a newer brand is doing behind the scenes like the watches assembled in the USA, or maybe they're based out of your hometown. Recently, I covered a brand called Loci Watches, who are making designs inspired by specific locations. And if you have a connection to one of those places, you might be drawn to that. Or the example I always use is my Antarctica monster. It's the one with the goofy penguin feet on the dial. Now at this point, I have far better divers, but I still love the monster because looking at it reminds me of being a kid and going to SeaWorld all the time. It takes me back and makes me smile, just like a character watch would for some, like a Snoopy or a Mickey. And I think by extension, this also incorporates those instances where you wanna buy something to celebrate a big life event, like a wedding or a birth of a child. You're tying something really special to that watch, and as such, you'll appreciate it, if not love it more because of that. Now, while number three is when you love what that watch is on a more philosophical level, number four is when you love what that watch can actually do, the more spec monster argument. Which honestly is perhaps the most dangerous reason here, as well as the least justifiable one. Because with some of these things, you're never going to take full advantage of it. Like, say you love the fact that this is a 3000 meter deep diver, or that it has a helium escape valve. Basically, these are the overbuilt, lifted Ford Raptors of the watch world. You're never going to use this to anywhere near its fullest capabilities, let alone it seems ridiculous to use this as a daily driver. I mean, yeah, you can see over all the other cars while you're in bumper to bumper traffic, but your gas mileage sucks. However, at the same time, it doesn't mean it's not cool to have that. You just got to be a little careful with it. And this also ties into the more simpler, usable things we'd like with watches as well. Like, say, a full titanium watch. Lighter can be better. Or that it has a scratch-resistant coating, so it's more durable. And this also ties into having a more specialty movement. I mean, we all love multiband on a Casio. Or maybe you love the idea of having something with GPS, so you can always be accurate worldwide. 
along the same lines, you have longer power reserves, a cost certified movement, as well as all the high accuracy quartz out there. And last, but certainly not least, spring drive. Need I say more? Now, number five, the last good reason, is also potentially a bad one when it's just by itself, and that's value, which some of you may not agree with. But I think buying something just because it's a good deal very rarely works out in the long run. It's more of an impulse buy, where you jumped on an early bird pricing or one of the AliExpress sales without really thinking about it. And impulse buys very rarely last, at which point you're going to sell it and probably lose a little bit. But that's by itself. Value when paired with one of the other reasons is a good strong indicator. It's a strong sign that it's a good buy. Like for me, I have a Hamilton Intramatic Chronograph. Now, I always wanted an automatic chronograph, and at least when I bought it, it was a pretty good deal for the price, especially with this particular movement. But I didn't just buy it because it was a good deal. I also bought it because for me, it's the perfect panda. And even though it's not the nicest, most expensive, best hot horology chronograph out there, I love it. I'm happy with it, and I don't really feel like ever having to buy another automatic chronograph. Now, those were the five good reasons, and I think most of the good reasons and signs that you should buy something fall into one of those. But before we wrap this whole thing up, I do want to talk to you about four bad reasons. Ones to watch out for. And number one is perhaps the most dangerous, and that's when you find yourself saying it's supposed to be the best. If you find yourself saying this, I think it's a sign you've fallen too far into the hot horology rabbit hole, that you might be paying way too much attention to what others are saying, either on forums or here on YouTube, and you're not paying quite as much attention to what you'd actually like. Now, I've always said that watch collecting is a journey, not a destination. And if you're doing that, you're paying more attention to what other people like, you're not actually on your own journey. You're just following along someone else's. So it's supposed to be the best is never a good reason to buy something. But like I said with value, if you have other good reasons attached to it, it's probably also okay. But I think you gotta make sure. Because usually when you're saying something like this about a watch, it does come with a pretty high price tag. And being wrong is not something you wanna do. Now, luckily, those high priced watches usually also come with a wait list, so you do have time to think about it. For the second bad reason, and let's all say this together now, I have to complete the set. No, no you don't. You don't really need every model of G-Shock or every colorway that ever existed of a particular watch. That's not reason enough. Now, if something's particularly cool about it, that's a whole other story. But just don't do it to be a completionist. We're not that OCD. Well, I hope we're not. As for number three, you know, it's been quite a while since I bought something. Which is a pretty dangerous thing to say. This is the do you drink alone in the morning to feel something sign of the watch addiction. It's not a good one, and it's not a good reason to buy a watch. And last but not least, I have a pretty controversial one with but it's an investment. To me, saying this, it's an investment, is a pretty dangerous thing to tell yourself. For many reasons. But the main one is that it's very rarely a real investment. And that's not to say that people don't flip watches and make money, or that a watch can appreciate in value. What I mean is be truthful to yourself when you say that. Because an investment is only a real investment if you're willing to sell it. And sell it whenever the optimal time strikes. You know, buy low, sell high. And hopefully it's something that'll also beat the market, or at the very least, inflation. And it has to be something you have no emotional attachment to. An investment is not a grail watch you're planning on keeping for the next few decades, or a watch you're planning to pass on to the next generation, or one you're wearing and will risk damaging most days of the week. I mean, you don't buy a rare and expensive car to use as your daily driver. No, you baby it. You take it out only on special occasions. But when it comes to grail watches, people tell themselves this all the time. And let's be real here. A watch like that you're only going to sell if you have to. Like when something goes seriously wrong, or when you found a new grail. Either way, you need some quick cash, at which point you rarely get what you'd want out of it. Or what you could have if you have sold it at the optimal time. So unless you're actually working as a trader, no, it's not a real investment. 
So those are the five good reasons and four bad ones on when to get something. And hopefully that'll lead to some better long-term buys. But if you disagree or think I missed something, let me know down below. And if you happen to have catched the title of this video where it says a practical guide to watch collecting, it's a new series I want to work on and add to from time to time. One that focuses on practical and logical advice for this hobby of ours. Advice that's grounded in reality rather than hot horology. In fact, I think I'm going to go rename my old 10 rules for watch collecting video into this series as well. But if you have any ideas for this or topics that would be good for this, let me know that down below as well. Otherwise, you all know what to do down below. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.